The sun is really important to us here on Earth. It provides our light, gives us vitamin D, and all kinds of other things. But did you know that major catastrophes would happen if it ever went out? I'm Bob from World 5 List, and join me as I take you through four things that would definitely happen if the sun were to ever go out. Number 4. Total Darkness I mean, I know what you're thinking, duh, of course total darkness, because when you think about the sun, you probably think about a big nice ball of light, right? One that keeps you warm and gives you something to look for in the sky? Well, see, that's the thing. The sun's effect on our world truly begins with the fact that it illuminates the entire thing, even when you don't realize that it does. Thus, if the sun were to ever go out, the world would be covered in complete darkness. Now, funny enough, it wouldn't be an instantaneous kind of thing, because light has to travel to Earth, so we'd probably have about 10 minutes of extra light after the sun went out, but once that's over, the whole world would be a really dark place. But wait, you say, what about the moon or the stars or the other planets we see in the sky? Wouldn't they be able to give us our light? Well, those are good questions, however, the answer is very grim. You see, it's because the moon is a celestial body, and that's why we see it in our sky. However, the only reason that we do see it is actually because of the sun. And do you know why? That's right, because the moon's surface is reflective. The moon's actually covered in a dust, and it's a reflective property that allows sun rays to make it shine. That's why there's this thing called the dark side of the moon, because it's always dark, and that's because the sun's rays can't reach it. So if the sun ever did go out and the light ceased to come from it, the moon would be a major casualty, and we'd no longer be able to see it. That goes double for any stars and planets that are also in the sky, because we've only seen them because the sun reflects their own lights and emissions. And if I'm being technical, the world probably wouldn't be totally pitch black. I mean, after all, humanity has created its own lighting system via electricity, and we'd be able to see around our world. It's just that natural light helps bring things into detail, and that's all without the need for electricity. And in my mind, it's also a major bummer, because it means that my electricity bill is about to get a whole lot higher. In addition to that, natural light that is given by both the sun and the moon during cloudy days and nights would mean that traveling would be a whole lot more difficult as well, because the lights on cars and other vehicles can't even come close to illuminating what's all around us, and it would be a major problem. Sadly though, that's just the beginning of our issues. Number 3. The Temperature Drop Now you could argue that this is the biggest thing that would happen to our Earth if the sun went out. After all, it doesn't just give light, it also gives us our heat. And that's really necessary for the survival of the planet alone. There are a few caveats to it though, but as you listen, you'll agree with me that some of these aren't exactly ideal, nor are they very quick. First, it should be said that the cooling of the Earth will not be immediate. In fact, most scientists agree that if the sun did go out even for only a day, not a whole lot would really happen. But why? Well, it's because our atmosphere is capable of holding its own heat. And ironically enough, it's also how global warming happens to an extent. Being as humanity is, we'd still be around and emitting fumes and pollutants into the air, it goes to reason that heat would also be maintained for at least a little while. However, I do emphasize just a little while. Because after about a week, the average temperature of the Earth is going to be, oh, a balmy zero degrees Fahrenheit. Adding to those woes, it would be the fact that ice and snow has to cover just about everything on the planet eventually, including even freezing the top part of the ocean. Yeah, it is actually possible, but only when the sun is not naturally heating the oceans itself. Now, if you're wondering how long it would actually take to get to that point, scientists do believe that in a year's time, the average temperature on Earth would be negative 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's when the ocean would freeze on the surface, more than likely. So you may be thinking, well, if we have a year, couldn't we think of something to heat the planet back up? It's another good question, and the answer to it is actually kind of tricky. 
There's a possibility that humanity could create something to combat the loss of heat. However, it's not really that sure of a thing. What's more, there might actually be a more natural solution. What you need to remember is that the ground beneath your feet is actually heated. You don't feel it because, just like the sun, the further you are away from the source, the less heat you're going to feel. Many who study the possibility of the sun going out say that if humanity did need a solution, all we'd have to do is just simply tunnel through the Earth itself and get to a point where the heat of the Earth's core can sustain us all. The one big problem with that, though, is for it to work on a global scale, we need not only to work fast, but also figure out a way to get all of humanity down there. And that's not really easy nor cheap. And while we may have a year to figure it out, it's probably not enough time. Another option is that humanity could go below the ocean waves and try to live near geothermal vents. But that too has problems in regards to time, space, and the ability to survive, which is another problem that we need to talk about. But before we do that, if you're new here, make sure that you're subscribed to our channel and turn your notifications on because we'd love to provide you more great videos like this one in the future. Number two, no plant life. While humanity may be struggling if the sun ever went out, it wouldn't be the only thing that struggled. In fact, all of life on Earth would be struggling with loss, but not for the sole reason of light and heat. However, because of what they represent, especially to the plant life on Earth. Here's a pop quiz for you. What's the name of the process that uses light to grow? I'll give you a moment to think about it. That's right, it's photosynthesis, and that's where the problem comes in. For if there's no sunlight, then photosynthesis immediately and completely stops. That means that plants not only won't grow, but they also don't make food for themselves or us. Now, yeah, humanity could help sustain plant life to some scale, and plants like trees and certain underwater plants would be able to survive on their own, but it still becomes a very bad thing. Plants are going to start dying at an alarming rate, and that'll be just the beginning of another major catastrophe. For humans aren't the only things that need plants to survive. Animals do too. In fact, all kinds of them. Herbivores would be the type of animal that would be most affected, and literally all of their food supply will have dried up. With no food, they're all going to die, which is going to cause cascading effects on all of the ecosystems they exist in. Don't believe me? Well, let's begin in Africa with an animal like the gazelle. Gazelles are herbivores and eat various forms of grasses and shoots to get the nutrients and water they need to survive. They're also hunted by predators like lions and cheetahs, and if the grasses on the savanna die out, then the gazelles will die out and that will affect the big cats, who will in turn get very violent on the plains, and they'll die out as well. Now imagine that all across the whole world will be affected, and it's all because plants give life back to the earth itself, a process that's really important, or else the world ends up becoming barren. The world being barren is another problem, because grass is a plant, and it's going to die out unless it's taken care of, and that's a problem, because there'll be no sunlight. It'll start slow and then grow until there's virtually no fertile ground without scientific help, which again could be done on a smaller scale, but definitely not on a global one. Another problem is that plants help to make the oxygen that we breathe, because they take in carbon dioxide in the air and recycle it back out. Now, if we don't have that happening, everybody's in trouble. The carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere will grow at such a rate that it's eventually going to suffocate and kill everyone, allowing us to not be able to breathe. You see, plants may be annoying sometimes, but they're crucial to our survival. Number one, the earth will lose its tether. Now, at this point, you're likely asking me, what else could possibly happen to the Earth, and won't we be dead anyway? Well, you're not wrong in thinking that, but wait, there's more. Another unseen force that governs our lives is gravity. No, not the Earth's gravity, that's going to remain intact, but it's not the only gravity that affects us. I'm talking about orbital gravity. Because the Earth and other planets in our solar system all revolve around the Sun, 
This is because it's so large, it creates its own gravity field that's so massive, it grabs and ensnares our planet along with the others. That's the reason seasons happen the way they do, because the heat of our sun, plus our planet's own rotation, causes heat and light to affect the planet differently during our 365-day rotation around the sun. But here's the question for you. What happens when that gravity suddenly stops? Well, to best show this, I'll do a quick experiment. Just find a bouncy ball, tie a string or a piece of cloth around it, make sure it's really tight, and then start spinning it in a circle. What you're doing is creating an orbit. Your hand is more or less the sun, and with the bouncy ball, well, that's Earth. Now continue spinning it and let go. Where did the ball go? If you did it right, it'd probably crash through your flat screen and killed everything, and the force of gravity along with your spin was pulling it the whole way. This is exactly what's going to happen to the planet and the other planets if the sun were to go out. Without a guiding body, our planet would literally start careening through the stars in whatever direction we're aimed at. Now, this would be disastrous on a whole lot of levels. First and foremost, our seasonal calendar will immediately go out the window. And secondly, without an orbit around a star, there's nothing stopping us from colliding into other things in our solar system or even the entire galaxy. And as you may know, there are asteroid belts out there along with comets and stars and planets and who knows what. The orbit that we have around our sun protects us from colliding into anything, and without it, it's really a crapshoot as to whether or not we survive. As if we didn't have enough issues, we'd then have to hope we didn't collide with an asteroid or something that would completely wipe us all out. Worse yet, we could literally collide with another planet. We could even collide with one that we know. Imagine hitting Jupiter, which is several times larger than us. We'd all die instantly. So as the old saying goes, save the best for last. Sadly, however, we save the worst for last. Because if the sun does go out, we'll all become shooting stars and won't have time to worry about the rest of the issues on my list. Thanks for watching. Does this make you grateful that the sun still works? Do you look up at it now and be a little more happy? Let me know all about it in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.